there, thank you for all being here today. Being a realtor, builder, and home designer, there's one thing I value most, and that's good design. Specifically, good design in our homes and neighborhoods. Today I wanna to share with you five design strategies that are meant to provide better enjoyment, and quality of life in our neighborhoods and homes. First, I want you to think about where you live. Is it an historic home close to the center of town? Is it an, a new home at the edge of the city? Do you live in close proximity with your neighbors? Or do you live in a rural area separated from your neighbors? It could possibly be your first home where you plan to start a family or start your adult life or a home that's your forever home or a home you plan to retire in. Next, I wanna think about why you live there. Has anybody asked you a question? Why do you live where you live? Think about it. Is it the neighborhood? Is it the perfect floor plan? Is it the style of house? Are you close to things that you enjoy, such as parks or churches or schools? Consider it. Where you live and why you live there can be answered quite simply. It's driven by need. A need for shelter, a need for comfort, a need for sanctuary, a need to feel connected, a need to work. Through the process of asking where you live and why you live there, I wanna help you guys identify the key design strategies you should search for that make a home akin to your lifestyle, enjoyable to live in, and memorable. Through the course of my talk, we're gonna look into the past, evaluate the future, and equip you with the knowledge to become advocates for better design, for better living, to help shape our homes and neighborhoods. But first I want you to think about the quality of the space you live in. Is it a high quality environment or a low quality environment? On a scale of one to five, five being high, one being low, score the place you live in. Do you, do you enjoy it? Is there room for improvement? Do you wanna get out of there? And hold that number in the back of your brain and we'll return to it a little bit later in the talk. So why do you live there, where you live? <laughs> so now for a brief history lesson. <laughs> so at this time we started to see the house morph out of its cottage industry upbringing and morph into a mass produced commodity. In 1947 and 1951 we saw the world's largest suburb, mass produced suburb of its kind in Levittown, Long Island, New York. There are 17,400 homes built offering five different floor plans. So you might recall the song, Little Boxes, Little Boxes on the Hillside, Little Boxes all the same, Little Boxes, all, you know, Tiki Tacky. That song was a commentary about neighborhoods like this. And at the same time in history, Joseph Eichler in Northern California was developing a different approach to the mass-produced home. His aim was to provide homes inspired from the modern design movement of the time, situated in planned communities, close to parks and public spaces. And you notice these advertisements here, Levittown, every modern city convenience plus country comfort. And notice the houses down the side. Pretty typical, you've seen those houses, they still are around today. And for $8,490 back in 1947, you could buy that house. And at the same time in history, in Northern California, you could buy a home for $94,000 in an Eichler development. Here it is, the home they all promised, but only Eichler is building. Both these developments were built with intention and purpose for providing a need for the growing American family. But they're strikingly different in both in their design and approach. And you could take a look at local examples of how these developers influence houses here in Bismarck. If you want to take a walk around Highland Acres neighborhood, you'll find similarities with Eichler developments, with different sizes and varieties and design. And if you want to walk around any of the neighborhood just to the north or east or west of the, of the Capitol grounds, you'll find similarities of Levittown. Both happening at the same time, totally different approaches. Both neighborhoods are still vibrant today and enjoyed today, just totally different design, different approach. So in the past, 1950s, the house could look like this. It was on average 900 square feet, modestly sized kitchen, dining, and living room area. There's probably two bedrooms upstairs, bathroom. The basement was mostly unfinished, 
Most of you probably lived or grew up in one of these houses. And you'll notice the car, the garage, space for a car. <laughs> right? And this is a time before World War II. Most garages or carriage houses were hidden in an alleyway. But now the developments are, are being designed in a way where you have a driveway into a garage and then there's a house attached to it. And so today we're looking at a house like this. The ubiquitous split level. You probably have lived in one of these. You might, are you familiar with one? But one thing you could see about this house compared to the last one, the really thing that's only changed is the size. And obviously there's a three stall garage, which has come standard here in Bismarck at least. And the house has gotten bigger. But the design, the quality design, has really been, been unchanged. So why is that? Do we value quantity over quality? Are we more focused on what's outside the box and on what's inside? Or maybe it's because the building industry and design industry are not talking. And the reality is, according to John Brown and Matthew North, North both architects in Calgary, Canada, it's estimated that less than 5% of homes in North America have any sort of design professional involved in the building or design of the house. So what does that mean for us? How can we change that? How can I change that as a building designer? I can't do it myself, but I have 100, 150 of you guys here to spread it. And I wanna share with you five design strategies that we need to spread to developers and builders, real estate agents, to help change the conversation of design in our homes and neighborhoods. So I want you to think back where you live and why you live there. As I go over these five design strategies, keep thinking about that number as it move up or down. So number one, location. Obviously the most important part of any sort of real estate transaction is location. So does the house's location fit your everyday routine and daily rituals of going to and from work, picking up kids from school, going to the coffee shop? Are there amenities such as parks? or public spaces nearby? Can the location of your house allow you for a more carefree lifestyle of mobility, less, spend less time behind your car and more time at home hanging out? And number two, size. Size does matter. A house can be too big or too small. There can be redundant spaces in your house. It, if a family of five lived in a house in the 1950s at 900 square feet, and the average size of an American family is dwindled. Why does our house keep getting bigger? So find a house that fits the needs and functions of your family or individual needs. Number three. Oh, let me return back to size. I got to make a point. And I don't want to offend anybody here because I know in North Dakota we love garages. <laughs> um, <laughs> but your garage should not be bigger than your house. And write, write, write this down. <laughs> Houses are for living, not for parking. And we, if it's a problem, we should find a different way. If we can't have less garage, let's hide them somewhere to design them better. <laughs> Composition. Like a good song, the walls of your house should lead you in to well-defined entries, clear circulation to a focal point, like a living room, bedroom, or living room, bedroom, or li living room, kitchen, or dining room. There should be adequate daylight. Does your house, if your house were a song, does it sound like Sinatra or a thir third grade band recital? The quality of space and the composition should be felt at every point throughout the house, from your bedroom to your bathroom, from your front door to your kitchen. Number four, responsiveness. How or what sort of environmental cues can your house take advantage of, such as solar orientation, views, physical surroundings? The inside of your house, like the mechanical, electrical system, should respond to its inhabitants while being, and the needs and comfort of its inhabitants while being mindful of energy consumption and sustainability. And the outside should respond to the physical environments of weather and climate. The outside should draw you in and stir your curiosity, and the inside should draw you out and connect you to the exterior surroundings. Number five, time and place. 
whether you're building a new home or renovating an old home, the design intent of what you're doing should represent its time and place and its execution and delivery. History and tradition are very important, but there should be latitude to be innovative and progressive to great spaces and homes that represent their time and place. So now I want you to reconsider that score of your house and the place you live. Has it shifted up or down? Have you realized something about where you live that you didn't realize before? Is there room for improvement? I'm glad to be here today to share with you these ideas. With the hopes that we could spread these ideas to developers, real estate agents, city planners, and builders. With the hopes that we could create better places to live and more enjoyable quality of places to be. Design, good design is crucial in our everyday life and enjoyment and the fulfillment of our lifestyles. I'm getting to the conclusion here, I just forgot it. <laughs> it's so cathartic, you're gonna cry. <laughs> so design is crucial for joining a sense of place, enjoying where you live, and connecting people and homes together. It's time to chart a path towards advocacy and awareness to create better spaces and neighborhoods for future generations. It's the design of the homes that makes them memorable. It's the people that makes them vibrant, exciting. It's the homes, it's, it's the people that make a house a home and the homes a neighborhood and the neighborhoods a community and good design in our homes and neighborhoods makes everyday life more memorable. Better design for better living. Thank you.